Welcome back to the couch. Dad's next to me, and I'm next to him. And uh, this is the original Father Son Voiceover Podcast Studios, and we are answering possibly your question if you are watching. Just so you know, this isn't really a couch; it's a love seat. So we're just sharing the love right now as father and son. Yeah, sharing the voiceover <laughs> love. Um, we have another question that we got from a viewer, and we're going to talk about it. It's about direct email marketing. There's kind of two parts to his um, great questions. Question here. Um, unfortunately, it's not the one where we talk about Dad's journey. We're going to do that at some point. We we're going to. We just got to get John up here for that. Um, so anyway, here is. He started off his thing talking about his own email marketing and stuff like that. And so I'm just going to get to the the main questions. He said, I've been pondering something that maybe you guys have some insights to as I continue my email marketing campaign. I have heard that there are an estimated 45,000 video production companies in the U.S. alone. As I frame my emails to them, I'm always curious as to how many voiceover roster requests an average video production company receives on a regular basis. Not sure if you have any idea on that, but if there's anyone to ask, anyway... Um, and then he asked, do you guys have other insights or Todd's tips on maybe the top three or four things a video production company might want to see in an email marketing outreach? So what do you want to tackle let's first? The, let's handle the first one first, just because I think uh, I might have less insight into that. So the These first one be- is... The first one is how many voice over roster requests an average yeah. video production company yeah. receives on a regular basis. And he said it. I happened to read his his email question, and he said it in there without asking video production companies. You could ask. You could do a survey. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we do a lot of marketing to video production companies and ad agencies and voice rosters. And so you do get a feeling. We don't have, you know, specific data. The cold hard facts. Yeah, yeah. that would say you know, of uh, this number of these types of things, they get this many per day. I don't even know if they know. My guess would be they don't know either. Uh, depending on the day and uh, and how maybe good their day is going, yeah. uh, how busy they are, uh, if they had a fight with, you know, somebody in their family or, you know, they got their tax bill, all sorts of stuff, they might be a little bit grumpy. And so they might say to you, which we've had people when we do cold calls or when we do direct marketing, email marketing, they say, I get these all the time. Well, maybe, maybe they do. Maybe they get them all the time. Or this is the fourth one today. Maybe it's exactly four, but maybe it's two and they're just having a a bad day. Or maybe they had four this week. They're just kind of saying, you know, leave me alone Mm -hmm. because they're busy people too. And if you know how voiceover works, it's typically the last chain or link of a chain of events, and they need it yesterday. And so if they don't need it today or yesterday, then they might not want you contacting them, or they might feel like they've gotten a lot more. Now, in practicality, my guess would be um, that the bigger video production company you are and the higher you rank on Google, in other words, if if you're looking and using Google to find video production companies, which a lot of us do, then you're going to find that, you know, that top page, they're probably going to get, mm-hmm. you know, more inquiries. Lots of touches. It just seemed like that because that's kind of how Google and SEOs and stuff like that works. Well, I was just going to say, going back to your point about people being grumpy or moody or whatever, because it's possible that their dog died the day before and they're like, I don't want to respond to you or I respond to you and I'm not happy. You could also hit that person right when they have a job yeah. and stuff like that. So don't worry about it as a voiceover talent. Just move on. Yep. You know, those are things. My personality is that way mm-hmm. anyway. I don't really care. It's just like, oh, well, see you later. You know, you're a video production company and you use voiceover, so you probably use voiceover. Yeah. So don't, you know, don't be take mad it personally. at me. Yeah. yeah. Don't take it personally. And so just move advice. on to the next, yep. move on to the next one because yep. I know that there are some personalities that can say, oh, no. Yeah. I don't want to do that again. Yeah. And just, just and move on because it's a numbers people. game. You don't want to bug people. I get that. I mm-hmm. mean, some people say that you should be sending out, you know, one the next day and then the next week and then two weeks later and then every month. I, I don't feel comfortable with that. Um, so, you know, we do basically a rotation mm-hmm. of every three months. So it would be safe to say that we, we don't necessarily know, but once again, how many. Right touches there are a day for every single video production company. Just 
don't feel bad that yours is a touch. I, you know what I mean? Just make sure that you're one of those touches, I guess I would say. If they get grumpy, who cares? Move on to the next one once again. Yeah. I know that's that's not a really concrete answer, but... Um, I go back to my mission statement, which is I want to make money doing voiceover. Yours, yeah. I'm in business. I'm in business, and so I want to turn a profit. And I don't want to bug people. I don't want to harass people or make them feel, you know, I don't want to turn them off. On the other hand, I remember early on, I was so desperate. I was so hungry uh, for for voiceover work that I, I was just feverishly sending out emails and making cold calls. And I remember there's one small company that I called this, or I, I contacted this guy via email. He didn't get back with me. And then it was a Saturday, but I was still sending out emails. Well, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to catch somebody. <laughs> and I sent it, and I accidentally stopped at the wrong spot on my list he doubled up. and I doubled up on him and he was mad at me and it hurt a little bit right at the beginning because I wasn't that good at it but even then I went back and I just said hey I'm in this to try to make money I didn't try to bug him and so I'm not going to take it personal on to the next one if I got well, blackballed you, yeah. by him I thought, oh, if you well. take it personally then you might not send out to other yeah. people again and stuff exactly. like that because you're afraid of and that you just you're not going to make any money doing that yeah um so that's kind of an answer without an answer yeah um so just keep I marketing think it's and fair though. I think sure, I think the answer yeah. is a good answer. It's just not specific, and I'm not 100 percent sure how you would get a specific without mm -hmm. surveying a good cross section of all sorts of different video production mm -hmm. companies. And then I think we'll just go to the next part of that question, and it was three to four things, either Todd's tips or or insights into what a direct email marketing maybe some things that should be in it or mm -hmm. shouldn't be yeah. in it. Yeah, so, and I, I typed out some things yeah. just simply because I want to be more specific. But I do want to start out, as I always do, and say these are my thoughts. These are my opinions. These are my biases. Um, they're not... Your experiences. They're, 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 they're founded in or, or the foundation is uh, uh, a successful direct email marketing uh, business. Well, maybe tell people how much you've made, how much you made in direct email marketing, even just last year, just to just give some, yeah, just yeah. not as a, yeah. once again, it's not as a bragging thing, but right. it's not an accident where you might say, well, was it wasn't lucky. Who, who yeah. died and made you king of direct right. email marketing? Right. Well, I do a pretty good job because this is how much I make. Yeah. Typically, you know, over the last uh, five, six years now, I've made over $200,000 per year and 60 to 70% of that income is direct email marketing. This last year, it was almost exactly 60%. And I made $800 shy of $200,000 in direct marketing, which if you round up to the next thousand, it's $200,000. So I made $200,000 in direct email marketing uh, through, uh, you know, new clients, but a lot through just last recurring year. clients, just, yeah, in 2022. So these are the things that I do, and they seem to work, and I keep tweaking them and keep thinking about them. But first of all, let's think about two things, not uh, basically two things, and then things underneath them. So the first thing when you think about an email is the subject line. And to me, that's important. Um, and so a few, just a few quick things about subject lines. Um, don't be cute. Don't try to get cute. Uh, don't be spamish looking. That is caps and free or discounted or emojis, things like that, that look spamish. Uh, don't try to trick them into opening your email. Just, you know, be honest and upfront with them. A lot of times I just say, are you accepting voiceover, voiceover demos, demos or yeah. mail uh, voiceover talent, Todd Barsness, or check out my latest links. Um, the one I'm using like right that. now is need voiceover, need VO for an upcoming project, yeah. question mark. Yeah. I've used yep. under 30 male baritone Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Voiceover talent, you know, just stuff like that 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 shows who you are right away so that there's no so what is this person yeah. selling me? Yeah, there you go. You just got about five or six free subject lines well, no, there if you just if you're want not, to adapt them. If you're not under thirty and you don't have a baritone oh, yeah, 40. voice, then you're Yeah. Yeah. Uh I just was listening to one gentleman who coaches who has subject lines that you can buy. So there you got some free subject really? lines there. Yeah. And then lastly, don't apologize uh, in the subject line, but especially in 
the text. Don't apologize. Don't say, you know, uh, brand new voiceover looking for work or, uh, you know, discounted because I'm one year in <laughs> or something like that. I've heard people do that. It's not, it's not made up. It sounds kind of made up maybe, but it's not. So don't apologize. Sorry to bother you, but nope, don't be sorry to bother them because you're <laughs> offering them a good service. That is, if you don't offer yourself. them a good service. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as far as, so those are some basic things with regard to the subject line without giving you exact subject lines, though Hudson gave you a few and I gave you a few. Um, no problem. Glad to help mm -hmm. out. Uh, first of all, as far as the text is concerned, and this kind of is the subject line, the text, it's not either one, but it's don't no attachments. Don't do attachments. Now, if they ask for them, then obviously they'll be looking for them. But the first time through, and I used to do that all the time, I'd send my demos. I'd send two small MP3 files, and that seemed to work, but I think spam filters are getting more sophisticated, and uh, and it just looks spamish. I think people are getting more. People are always afraid of, yeah. of clicking on any sort of yeah. link that's in there that's yep. that's a, an attachment, because it could be a virus. Yeah, so, uh, you know, try to make it personal. This is my opinion again. Try to make it personal, what I mean by personal, is you know go to their website, find a contact person if you can. Um, maybe you look around a little bit and then shoot them off an email. Get an get an email from somebody. Hopefully a contact name. You know Joe at uh, ABC Video Production Company. So try to make it personal that way. I personally don't encourage voiceover talent to over personalize. In other words, oh I went to your. Uh, Facebook page, Facebook and page found your, your dog website, Polly your LinkedIn. I, yeah, I found your dog Polly, the the studio dog, and oh, she's so cute. And and all why that kind is of stuff. that? Uh, well, a big reason is is because um, a I, I, most of them won't be clicked on, most of them won't be opened, and I don't think that's what they're interested in. Now, will some be interested? Will that you know make your way into to the hearts of some people? Probably, but if it's not open, first of all, all that time is wasted. Um, and so that's mm -hmm. the biggest thing. Um, but second of all, I don't think they really, really, most of them, I think what, I think they want to know, which is, uh, let's see, down just a little bit, uh, but I'll come back to this. What can this guy or gal do for me? Mm -hmm. That's what they want to know. And they're hiring voiceover talent, so they want to know, can you produce the goods? <laughs> and so that's what they want to see. Short and sweet, be concise. No personal stories, you know, I just got back from this or that and uh, I quit my job and had to get this and I got into voiceover and I've made this amount of money and no novels, nothing like that. Um, I don't personally do credits. I used to, but I don't anymore. I thought about that and I've thought about why was that? Was it because I was a little bit underconfident, insecure, and so I had to throw some names out there? before my uh, demos or before my links, I don't know for sure. Right now, what I wanna do is I wanna greet them, maybe make a statement or two, and then I want to have my links right there. And I want those links to be clicked on once and for those to start. I know sometimes if you're doing, especially YouTube, you'll get a commercial. Mm -hmm. I think people expect that now a little bit, but I don't want them having to click around a lot. I don't want them to have to click on this and then go to this and click on that and then go to your website and click again. And especially no scrolling. We don't want scrolling. Um, One page. Yeah. That's what you're yeah, saying. Yeah. You don't want them to scroll down and have to try to find your that's links you or your it, demo. That's why you try to keep yeah. it simple, short yeah. and sweet and hard to beat. Yeah. One page. Now, if you are starting out and you don't have maybe super great demos, maybe they're kind of DIY demos, but but decent because you're good. That's me. Uh, yeah. Um, you don't have actual, or you don't have a lot of actual product, uh, you know, projects. Examples of projects yep, you've done. Yep. Then maybe you want to throw out a few credits just to <laughs> have some credibility. But I would consider this, because direct email marketing is swimming in a little bit more the deeper end of the pool, it's a tougher competition, then I would either maybe wait to do direct email marketing because they wanna hear your demos, they wanna hear your stuff, um, or I might direct email marketing to lower paying, lower expectation markets. 
And what I mean by that is especially international. And I'm not talking about Canada. I'm not talking about the UK, uh, maybe not even Australia. Those I'm, I'm talking more about maybe Pakistan. Um, and th this isn't, I'm not putting them down. I'm just saying a lot of times you they can have get lower, a lot of work from those places. You can, and, get and a, good start. a lot of times they're they're looking for a little bit lower uh, budget budget wise, and so their expectations might not be quite as high. But you can get in the game, and you can make some money, and you can get some credits, and some of them will pay, you know, very good. So that would be my suggestion. Uh, just a few more. I mentioned no scrolling to links. Um, one to two links of actual projects would be best. If you don't have any good actual projects, then I would say a second thing would be to a sound cloud of your demos. If you have, don't have that or, you know, for some reason want to go to your website, as long as the demos are right there, then maybe a website link. But we're trying to eliminate clicks. One click is best. Well, one click is to open your email. That's one click. Mm -hmm. uh, two clicks is to press your link to your video. Three clicks, it might be three strikes and you're out. And um, let's see, after the links, then in one sense, it matters what you put there, but in another sense, it doesn't. If you wanna talk about how easy you are to work with, if you wanna talk about some people you've worked with, if you wanna talk about your gear, fine, after the links, after the short introduction, then the links, than anything else you want, as long as you don't drone on. I just wouldn't. Some people will want. Some people will like that. And if they get past your links and they say, "Hey, I really like this guy. I'm going to check out his website, or I'm going to look at his Facebook, or mm -hmm. I'm going to get to know him a little bit better and hear his story." That's fine. After the links, um, we've been hearing from a gentleman who's a business consultant recently locally here, and he's been finding s some new things about spam filters. At least I think he understands them better uh, than I do. And so just a few things that I don't understand all these so much, but these are things that he says, so I'm saying it. Um, mm. Looking for maybe a little bit more conversational emails, not, not a lot of, um, you know, again, emojis and sales talk, salesy pitch type things that are shorter, almost like I'm having an email with you. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just quickly. Hey, Todd, how's yeah, it going? Yeah, yep, you know, yep, that kind of an I email. do voiceover. Yep. You know, do you need voiceover yep. for an upcoming project? Yep. Small like in that. size, small in size. That is, I don't know how they're measured, MBs or something like that. Again, I'm showing, my, I'm showing my <laughs> ignorance. But small in size, as small as you can make them without losing the, the, the context of what you want to have. And then, of course, no spam looking. Uh, with, again, big capital letters, sales, free, all these types of things. So those are a few things, especially the subject line and then the text of the email that I think um, are some pretty important things. And uh, they're things that I've employed over the years and learned over the years to, I think, some good success. Yeah. All right. If you have any questions or concerns or anything like that, feel free to get a hold of us. You can comment below. If you have questions, or you can email me, HudsonBarsness at Yahoo.com, if you want your question answered like this in this setting. So thanks to the gentleman who sent yeah. the question. We appreciate it. Um, I don't think there's really anything else. They can see our numbers, videos, oh, sure, and yeah. check out some of the other mm -hmm. things that we have in our podcast, yeah. things like that. Yep. Interested in more voiceover stuff, we have Todd's tips and numbers.